tonight. Uh, thanks, everyone. Really excited to be here. Uh, you can see Ali kept going to the gym after that, and I didn't. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun when we, uh, <laughs> when we were going there. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to talk today about uh, data governance and sharing for Lakehouse. I'll talk about some things we're doing on the Databricks platform, as well as a lot of work we're doing in open source uh, with the open source uh, Delta Sharing project. So let me start by talking about governance. So anyone who's had to do it knows that governance for data and AI, and AI today is very complex because of the very complicated uh, technology stacks involved with multiple different systems. Uh, and by governance, just to be clear, I mean uh, controlling who has access to data, auditing that, and in general understanding how data is used in your organization. Um, and so one of the big challenges is that there are so many different technologies involved with different ways of doing governance. For example, in a typical enterprise today, you'll have a lot of data in your data lake. Think something like Amazon S3. And if you want to control permissions on that, you can set permissions at the level of files and directories. Now, this is already a bit of a problem because it means you can't set fine-grained row and column permissions. Um, and it's also very hard to change uh, uh, your model for how you organize data. You have to move all the files around if you want to change your directory structure. So that's already kind of awkward. Now, on top of that, you probably want to think of your data as tables and views. So you might have something like Hive Metastore, where you set permissions on tables and views. And it sounds great, but the problem is those permissions can be um, out of sync with the underlying data. Um, and so that leads to a lot of confusion. And then you also have your data warehouse. You have richer ways of setting permissions there. Um, but um, it's just a different governance model. You set it all up in SQL with grant statements. And then you have many other systems, like your machine learning platform, dashboards, and so on, that each have their own um, way of doing uh, permissions. And you have to somehow make sure your policies are consistent across all of these. So a year ago at Data AI Summit, we announced a major new component of the Databricks platform, Unity Catalog, which gives you a unified governance layer for data and AI assets. And the idea is, is really simple. For all the kinds of data assets you can create in Databricks, we have one interface for managing permissions, managing auditing, and so on. And that's Unity Catalog. Um, and when designing this, we wanted to make the interface to set the, the permissions and to manage it very open. So we actually chose to base everything on ANSI SQL grants. So anyone who's administered a database, any tool that knows how to set permissions in a database can use Unity Catalog to manage all these assets. Um, and we also set up centralized auditing and lineage. So last year, we were just starting uh, you know, to, to hold out this product. We we're still developing it very actively. Um, and since then, we've added a lot of functionality to Unity Catalog. So I want to tell you a little bit about some of the new things we added and uh, what's coming next. So first of all, just how do you use Unity Catalog? So this is the most basic thing you can do with it. You can set up access controls. You can set them up using standard SQL. You can use a REST API or UI as well. And we've extended this beyond tables to other kinds of objects, like, for example, files in your cloud object store. And we do that in a manner that's consistent with the permissions you set on tables. And we also have really easy access to audit information. It's just a system table that you can read with all the actions, so very easy to see everything happening on your lake house. Now, beyond that, we have built-in search and discovery. It allows you to quickly search, document things about all the data in your organization um, in the UI. Um, and we also have a really powerful lineage feature that we, we, we just launched. So um, this allows you to set up, lin to track lineage on tables, columns, dashboards, notebooks, jobs, basically anything that you can run in the Databricks platform and see how, what kind of data fed into each one and who's using it downstream. So very useful for understanding how data is used, fixing issues with data, and so on. So to show you a little bit of this in action, I'm actually going to do a short demo of just the lineage feature. Um, so I'm going to head over here and log in to do that. Let's see. All right. So yeah, I think if you can show that on the screen. OK, great. So yeah, so I'm here in Databricks. This is just one of our, you know, like actual deployed environments. Um, and I have a little notebook that's going to process some wind turbine data. And I'm um, just going to 
get this running. So you can see this has some a Python command at the top um, and then a SQL command. So the Python command is taking data from three tables and joining it together to create this table called Turbine Master. And then the SQL command is com creating a new table, Turbine Features, based on some computation, based on this, um, this command over here. And so, you know, they're just arbitrary code. Um, the, the, the lineage feature we have works with any computation you do in Spark in any programming language. So now let's look at the Data Explorer here and uh, try to find uh, um, this, uh, this data. So this is the, the table I created, Turbine Master. And you can see here all this information about it. Um, you can set permissions on it. And there's also a tab for lineage. So one of the things you can do is see the lineage graph. And this is actually computed in real time as you do work on Databricks. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. So yeah, so what you see here, this table was created by combining three other tables, and then it was used to produce one thing. And you can even click on these guys and see what's producing each of these upstream. So we, we connect all this information as you do computation on the platform. And beyond that, the lineage also extends to individual columns. So for example, for this column, I can see where it came from upstream, and I can also see downstream it's actually used to compute two columns in this, in this features uh, table. Um, yeah, and it, it even extends to notebooks. So I can see this notebook was used to create the table, and there are also a whole bunch of notebooks using it. And that's useful, for example, if I ever change the table, I want to know which users I'm going to impact by doing that. So that's Lineage and Unity Catalog. <laughs> so switching back, let's switch back to the slides here. All right, so, so that's just one feature of Unity Catalog. We've also been working to integrate Unity Catalog with partners across the modern data stack, and we have integrations with many best-in-class tools. So this includes advanced governance tools that can set sophisticated policies across Databricks uh, as well as other platforms, uh, and also leading products in data ingestion, uh, BI, and data pipelines. Um, and we also had a bunch of uh, customers using Unity Catalog and giving us great feedback. So here are just two examples. Block is using us for uh, financial data that they process, and Millerman is using us for healthcare data. And in both cases, it's really simplified the way they manage data at scale. So today, I'm really excited to announce that Unity Catalog is GAing. We'll be rolling out GA in the coming weeks for Unity Catalog. Um, yeah. So yeah, very excited to see what everyone does with it. And we also have an exciting roadmap ahead. Uh, some of the big things we're working on include attribute-based access control. This allows you to set tags on all the kinds of objects you can have in Databricks, and then set a policy that applies to anything with a specific tag, like, say, all your data tagged finance, including dashboards, models, all that stuff. Uh, and we're also working on easy row and column filtering within a table to, uh, to show people just uh, different pieces of it. So that's Unity Catalog. Um, that's one key step towards maximizing the value of data in an organization is actually being able to govern it inside it. But with, with uh, Databricks uh, uh, and the Lake House, you want to look at all the ways you can maximize the value of data, and there's a lot more that you can do. So for example, a second important pillar to really using data uh, e effectively is sharing data between organizations, and we support that through the open source Delta Sharing project that we started last year at this conference. So I'll tell you a little bit about what's new with that. So first of all, why, why is data sharing important? M many organizations are now starting to share data either with partners, so just to improve a common business process, you can share you know, details about like, wh what, uh, what you're doing together. Um, but also many are starting to monetize data. And Gartner, for example, um, says that uh, they expect uh, three times better economic performance from companies that uh, share data and are part of an ecosystem. And they also see 50% more of these ecosystems starting just by next year. Um, so today, you can do data sharing in a number of proprietary platforms, mostly data warehouses. But there are a lot of problems with using these. So um, we talked with, with many data providers, many data consumers, and they all had some challenge with, with these. And the issue is that the sharing is only within one technology platform. For example, in BigQuery, you can share data with other BigQuery customers. And in Redshift, you can sh share data with other Redshift customers. But if you ever want to share with someone on a different 
different technology uh, platform, it's a problem. And this is a big issue for data providers because you work hard to create a data set, and now uh, you have to copy it into you know, 5, 10, 20 different systems just to reach all your users. And you want to reach as many users as possible with you know, minimal maintenance overhead. Um, so the problems are because you have vendor lock-in here, um, the only way to, to actually reach a lot of users is through expensive replication and maintenance of all these data sets. So when we looked at data sharing, we took a very different approach based on open source. Um, so last year at the summit, we created Delta Sharing, an open standard for data sharing. And it's a very simple REST API that any platform can implement. And basically, any system that can process Parquet can read data through Delta Sharing. The way it works is the provider has a Delta table in cloud storage. They can run this server in front of it and add users. And then the users can connect with any client, all, all the ones I'm showing there, like Pandas, Apache, Spark, all have plugins. Power BI has a plugin to, to read from Delta Sharing. Um, and then those can process it you know, anywhere they are. They don't have to be uh, on the same uh, software platform. And the transfer is efficient because it uses um, a, a feature of uh, cloud object stores that allows you to give someone temporary access to read just one file. So you don't have to stream all the data through the server. It's actually really fast. So now you get cross-platform sharing. You publish your data once, and people can consume it uh, from anywhere. Uh, and you can share your existing large-scale tables without copying them into a different system. So at the last summit, when we announced this, we were just putting up the GitHub repo. Like, it was literally empty two or three months before the conference. Uh, so it was a brand new thing. So we didn't know how this would do. And we've been very excited with the growth of the community since then. Actually, today, there are petabytes of data exchanged using Delta sharing every day just on Databricks alone. Um, and this is, you know, yeah. So this is data that's actually read and processed across organizations. It's not just people publishing stuff. Um, and here are just two examples of um, uh, customers that are using this. So, so NASDAQ is using Delta sharing to, um, to, 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 to monetize very large data sets they have that they couldn't share through legacy platforms. They were just too big, too expensive, but they were just sitting there in Amazon S3 in an open storage format. So now they can actually uh, monetize those. And then Shell is using it to exchange massive uh, data sets uh, within the energy industry where a lot of companies want to coordinate on fine-grained data to improve their processes together. Um, we've also added a lot of new things in the open source project. You can see a lot of new connectors. We started with just Pandas and Spark, and there are many that have been released and are in progress. Um, we added a feature called Change Data Feed, a very popular feature from Delta Lake that lets the consumer uh, see what changed in each release of a table, makes it much easier to consume shared data sets. And also for Databricks users, we added very easy one-click sharing with another Databricks account. Just put in their account ID, and you can share a table with them. Um, and we're also excited to announce that Delta Sharing is GAing, and it's going to roll out um, in the coming weeks. <laughs> yep. yep. And like Unity Catalog, we have an exciting roadmap ahead. Two of the big things we're working on are sharing views, which allow you to do fine-grained data filters and other computation before you send the data to someone, uh, and also sharing streams. So someone can consume a table as a stream to do real-time processing on, uh, you know, on data across organizations. OK, so that's, uh, that's data sharing. We think it's really important for maximizing the, the, the value of data. Um, and so today uh, at the conference, we're also announcing two brand new efforts that built on, uh, on Delta sharing to further expand how organizations can use their data in today's ecosystem. And these are the Databricks Marketplace for commercializing your data and Databricks Cleanrooms for private computing. So yeah, so let me just briefly explain each of these. So I'll start with Marketplace. Um, so we looked around, and um, you know, ma many cloud providers offer data marketplaces. But when we asked users about you know, these marketplaces, such as data providers, they actually you know, they don't use them that much. And they, they said there were a couple of limitations. One limitation is that each marketplace is closed. It's for a specific cloud or a specific data warehouse or software platform, because the, the goal of these from the vendors is to get more people computing on their platform and paying them money. And so that's 
nice for those vendors, but if you're a data provider and you worked hard to create a data set, it's really annoying to have to publish it to 10 different platforms just to reach all, all the users who want to use your data set. Uh, so it's a problem. And then from the user side, one of the challenges is these are just limited to publishing data sets. So you go in there, you see a table or a file, and you can pay you know, $50,000 to get it or whatever. Uh, but what are you going to do with it? What if it's not useful to you? Like all, all you get is that table. Then you have to figure out how to use it. So it would be nice to share you know, more than that, to share kind of entire applications or solutions. So we wanted to rethink the concept of data marketplace. We think what people are looking for is a bit more general. It's sort of a solution marketplace. And we also thought it's really important to be open. So as a publisher, you publish stuff once, and then people can consume it uh, everywhere. And that's what we're doing with, um, with Databricks Marketplace. It's an open marketplace for data solutions that's built on Delta sharing. So any client that can read Delta sharing can actually access this marketplace. Um, and this has um, some really nice benefits for both providers reaching more users and publishing more complete applications, uh, and for consumers uh, who can actually get started with something that includes not just data, but code, you know, notebooks, ML models, dashboards, examples of how to use the data. And we've set it up so pretty much anything you can build on the Databricks platform, you can publish on the marketplace to give someone a complete application. So to demonstrate uh, Databricks Marketplace, I'd like to invite Zahir Avalani, our Senior Director of Engineering for the CEA, who's going to give you a demo. Oh, you're there. <laughs> hey. Thank you, Matei. I'm so excited to introduce the Databricks Marketplace, an open marketplace where all the data and AI assets are in one place to help you get to insights faster. So how does it work? Let me walk you through it from the perspective of an end consumer. Let's imagine that I'm a data analyst working on an acquisition in the retail space. I need some data on purchasing trends and I need it right away because we're in a competitive situation and we need to make a decision soon. Here in the Databricks marketplace, I can already see a variety of data products ranging from financial data products from providers like NASDAQ to healthcare, provider, healthcare products from providers like IQVIA. Below the featured providers, each, data, each tile represents a data product. A data product includes not just packaged data sets, but it can also include dashboards, notebooks, and even machine learning models. And I can search across all these data products right here. So let's put in retail. Let's take a look at this data product from Yipid Data, a leading market research data and insights firm. It looks like something that I can leverage, but I want to learn more. Let's take a look. In the product details page, Yippa Data has provided an overview of the data product and some potential use cases to help me learn more about the offering. I really need to speed up my understanding of this data set. So how do I do that? Yippa Data has also included a notebook with some examples of working with the data. Let's take a look. Oh, wow. Here are some example visualizations and analysis of the data. This is so helpful. Before, I would have spent days trying to get these types of insights. This notebook has really helped accelerate my understanding of the data set and has given me a head start to start thinking about how this can apply to my use case. But there's more. Here on the top right, I can navigate to a live dashboard of the full data set. I'm getting to do all this exploratory analysis before I get the data. That way, I can be confident that it's what I need for my use case. And this dashboard could be really useful to my organization on an ongoing basis. Now that I'm confident that I want to use this data, let's go back to the marketplace and we'll get the data. There's a catalog telling the marketplace where to provision the data product. And I'll also get the dashboard and the notebook. 
and I'll get data. And in less than a second, I now have access to the data. <laughs> Behind the scenes, when I clicked on Get Data, the provider is automatically provisioning the Delta share in my workspace. And the dashboard and notebook are deployed into my workspace. And so now, the provider will also be notified that I requested access to the Delta share, and they can follow up with me as part of the evaluation. I can click on the notebook and continue on with my analysis. Even if you're not a Databricks customer, you can still go through this entire workflow. The Databricks marketplace is not just for Databricks customers. It's open to all. What this means is that if you, are a, if you register for an account, you can log in and browse and access the marketplace. And because it's powered by the Open Delta sharing protocol, you can use the tool of your choice. So for example, if you're a Power BI user, Power BI can connect directly to the data provider using Delta sharing. Consider what we just did. With the Databricks Marketplace, you can search across a variety of data products. You can use descriptions, notebooks, and dashboards to quickly evaluate if it meets your needs. And you can get the data and related assets delivered to your workspace without having to configure or build any data ingestion. Stay tuned for more details on the Databricks Marketplace later this year. Thanks, Zahir. All right, thanks so much, Zahir. Yep, that was, uh, that was really cool to see. So this is the first open marketplace for data and AI in the cloud. We already have some awesome partners with, with the marketplace, as you saw. And uh, we're excited to see what, um, what everyone else will do with it. Um, so if you can switch back to the slides. Um, OK. There we go. OK, so, uh, so the last thing I want to cover here is um, private computing with Databricks cleanrooms. So what are cleanrooms? Uh, if you're not aware of the term, they're an emerging concept that a lot of organizations are starting to use to run computations on joint data. And basically, they're a way to set up a secure environment where different owners of data sets can put in you know, data sets of their choice and run computations that are mutually approved by uh, everyone involved. So for example, if you think of a retailer or an advertiser, they may have a lot of questions about how campaigns are doing together, but neither of them wants to give its full data set to the other one. That's very risky. But they could set up a clean room to run a specific computation. And same thing applies, say, to two banks that are trying to detect fraud together and many other use cases. Um, now, clean rooms have, have existed for a while, uh, but the existing solutions have a couple of drawbacks. A lot of them are just built into SQL only systems. So the only things you can do uh, in the clean room are SQL. And this isn't enough for more advanced analytics like machine learning, graph processing, the things you need for a lot of the use cases I talked about. And also, these are these, are these proprietary platforms where you have to copy all your data in. So for small data sets, maybe you can copy them in and do this stuff, but if you have massive you know, petabyte scale data sets um, in cloud storage, uh, you, you can't do that. It's very expensive. Um, so at Databricks, we, tend, we actually happen to have technology that can address both these platforms, uh, both these problems. First of all, we have a cloud platform that lets you run the very best open source data and AI tools, and we can run it in a serverless, automated, and secure fashion. And second, we have Delta sharing, which lets you securely share uh, access to some of these large data sets. So this is what we're using in Databricks Cleanrooms. It's a simple cleanroom solution that allows you to run any kind of computation that the Databricks platform supports on existing lakehouse data. So if you have parties involved in a cleanroom, they can each uh, they can mutually agree to create a cleanroom. They can each share some tables into it, and they can each approve jobs. And it's got three benefits. The jobs can be arbitrary computations you can run on Databricks. They can use Python, R, SQL, GPUs, you know, TensorFlow, whatever you want. You can you can run it in your cleanroom computation. You don't need to replicate your data, and they're scalable to large number of collaborators and uh, many uh, and large data sizes. 
So we're just getting started today uh, with, with, uh, with this feature, but we're very excited and we'd love to hear about your use cases for it. So that's it for uh, governance and sharing on the lake house. We now support four really important ways of maximizing the value of the data. And the really cool thing to me is that we're doing all of these following the lake house philosophy. So they all work with existing data at massive scale in open format, and they all have open interfaces. That means it's not just Databricks, but a wide variety of computing platforms that can participate in these. And we're very excited to see what you do with them.